Welcome back to Trading 360. Glad you're with us on this Monday. I'm Nicole Petalides. It is time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Rick Ducat will take us through the charts here to take us through the trades. Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy. Good morning to you both. Scott, Good morning. this feels like an incredible, incredible week. I mean, you have the election, you have the Fed. Uh, what will happen? This is obviously a neck and neck horse race election. Um, what are you going to be watching for in the markets? What kind of moves might you make? So no, number one, I don't think anything is going to be decided this week, unfortunately, and that is going to probably present a lot of volatility in the markets for the rest of the week. And I'm sure with every headline we all see, Nicole, whether it's, you know, uh, one one side is, is the projected winner in Michigan, one side is the projected winner in Wisconsin, wherever that's going to be, is going to affect the market. So I think anybody that is trading, you know, day trading in this market, you have to be ready to be incredibly nimble, use stops, because we could, you know, really see some very quick, violent action happening in the markets this week. So uh, I'm prepared not to sit on the sidelines, but I am prepared to to really be very proactive in my moves. Okay, so you're going to make some moves when you really see that volatility happening, I guess. Um, first up, you have Broadcom. Why did Broadcom yep. jump out at you? And where do you think this stock is headed? You know, it's been consolidating right around the 50-day moving average or so. And I think based on um, not just its own outlook, but what's happened with NVIDIA here, the NVIDIA news, I really like a short-term rebound here back to 177, 178. We're seeing the stock up a little bit this morning here. And if the markets do continue to rally strong this week, uh, whether it's on the back of election rates, what you know, the Fed, whatever it is, I can absolutely see Broadcom trading uh, 182 or higher in the near term. Okay, let's see what Rick Ducat has to say about the chart. Sure, Nicole. And we can see that, you know, uh, for much of the year, the trend has been up. We can, you know, just see that easily. Uh, and the choice is, though, between our white trend line here and our blue trend line. Our white trend line goes more along the closing prices that were, you know, the low points. The blue trend line goes more along the intraday. So kind of a, a disparity between how you choose to look at it, but overall still going upward. The problem came recently when we made an attempt at taking out those old 52-week highs that came in near one. 85 kind of peaked our head above in terms of the price action but you know kind of rapidly fell off here now you could argue kind of a triangular shape between our two white uh, white dash trend lines here in the thick of this volume node area near about 173 or so uh, so the the areas of interest to the upside first we've got our yellow 21 day EMA near about 174 then we have this red line repeated high point and then you know low points around 177 and then the double top type highs that we saw near 185, 186. So that's the upside. To the downside, very close. 63 day EMA near about 168.40. Then our green line here, gap level, high point, you know, congestion, stopping point, et cetera, 166. And then that's where things kind of get a little, a little dicey then below that here. Uh, you could say that this area right here, a volume node near about 160. That could be one place to watch, but RSI tilting bearish, trending downward here uh, despite this green candle forming today all right what do you think i mean scott what are you going to be watching for here i'm going to be watching for for a turn on tech in which i think you know interest rates may be what really decides what tech is going to do this week and next if we see the 10-year uh, kind of hover around this 430 level. I know it traded lower this morning. It's back up to around 430. You know what? The market has accepted that. Tech has accepted that. If we start to all of a sudden see a stronger dollar come in play and rates moving higher, then this this one could be a uh, a quick move to the downside. But I really like the upside potential here. Okay. Up next here you have PayPal. Tell me a little bit about PayPal. I think about PayPal, too, as we go into the holidays. I don't know. Is there sure. a story there? Um, I, I really think there could be. I'm looking at it more as a technical 
move than anything else. And this is another name that's really been on a tear as of late, um, hovering again, just like Broadcom, right around that 50 day moving average. And I like that here because, you know, we were at 52 week highs not too long ago, stock pulled back and it has consolidated at support. And I think this support could lead to a nice pivot back to not just 80 ish, but filling that gap where those 52 week highs were right around 83 and 84 area. And then, yes, as you said, Nicole, we certainly, you know, have holidays coming up. And quite frankly, if Halloween spending is any indicator, I think that actually lays out a very uh, optimistic um, platform a layout for retail because Halloween second most spent of all time from consumers here. And if they're willing to spend there, I think that that is uh, very optimistic for the holidays. Okay. Um, let's see what Rick says. Rick, please, the technicals here on PayPal. Yeah, sure. And, you know, uh, very interesting chart here because we have some very clear areas of separation. First, look at our horizontal blue line here. That was a high point that we reached all the way back here. Price topped out around that point multiple times. And, you know, this area in particular, intraday highs far beyond that. But look at the closing price. It was below once again here. So uh, this kind of persistent area held true once again after the breakout. This time it was support. Old resistance becomes new support. So this area around 68 was really important. We had another very similar area right here with our light green line around 73. Once again, intraday highs beyond that area. But the closing prices were right around 73 or so the closing price is more important from that point we were able to draw this upward sloping channel here where we topped out with a large green candle at 8370 and then we had a very sharp drop off uh, uh, you know after earnings were kind of digested now we're in a situation where we have dropped below our channel and we are also dropping below our previous lows that we saw right here uh, near about 78 or so so red line old uh, support in the form of 78 that would be now resistance here and then uh, you know these high points right around here near 82 that would be another upside target to watch out for to the downside gap level green line also orange 63 day EMA all coming together near about 75 that would be a key downside supportive area and then our light green line our old our old highs around here near about 73 those are those are the downside points of interest okay um, you know final thoughts here on this name here Scott I think especially based on what, what Rick just pointed out with the areas of support just below where we're trading, I think there's a lot more upside potential than there is downside risk in this one. All right. Last but not least, we look at General Motors. There's been so much news, obviously, for all these mm. automakers and some uh, trials and tribulations, you could say. But uh, where do you think this name is headed at $52 today? It's up 2.5% today. So Rick just mentioned something very, very important that prior resistance can be support, prior support can be resistance. So when I look at GM here, that 50 to 51 level, which was big time previous resistance, after the stock went through there, pulled back down, that prior resistance held as support. That is a very bullish sign for me. So if we continue this move off of that, and I, I really like that support that it held there. So if it can pivot higher, we have the, the you know possibility of getting right back to those highs, moving higher. Besides that support where we were at that previous resistance, we also have a 20-day moving average, a gap fill, and a 50-day moving average all hanging out there as support. So this is another one to me, when I look at the charts here, much more possible upside than there is downside. Okay. Um, you, know, you know, big picture here, GM. This is the last one. Get the technicals on this one, please, Rick Ducat. Right. Very, very clear ceiling here. This is what uh, Scott was referring to here. I, I drew this line technically just to be exact. Forty nine ninety. That was our closing price. But, you know, the, it's obvious. It's, it's the, the point where we're trying to make here. And really the kind of price action that we saw kind of an ascending triangle type shape here where we had uh, our, our green line of resistance. But really, uh, you know, with many things, it's kind of subjective. You could also look at this kind of a different way, kind of a range bound trade here more recently between two horizontal levels 
levels of support and resistance. So between about 44 to 50 or so, that's kind of where the near-term price action was stuck. Then, obviously, huge breakout to the upside after earnings here, and that's why we look for these repeated areas where price stops because there can be an energetic reaction when it is eventually breached here. Now the recent price action, kind of a bear flag, or excuse me, bull flag type shape here where we had a big gap, a huge surge to the upside, then a bit of retracement and consolidation. In this case, the flag type shape, two parallel lines. Now we are breaking out of the boundaries of the flag area. The resistance here, 54.20, that's the point to watch here. To the downside, 49.90, you know, whatever. 21-day EMA right, uh, right on the nose as well there. So uh, an easy place to watch for further support uh, potentially. Okay. Uh, we'll give you the final word here, Scott, because uh, right now we have a mixed market. The VIX uh, right now 21.91. You, you, you excited for this week or nervous? How do you feel? Definitely not nervous. Very excited. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity out there. What's really interesting, one thing I want to point out is if you look at the implied volatility in the small caps, so the Russell, IWM, it explodes from Wednesday moving on. It absolutely explodes. That tells me that the market is really expecting this thing, the election, to be really protracted on in the future here. So that is definitely something to watch. And those small caps, we, we all know, are just you know so sensitive to, to rates. So you know definitely keep an eye on that. True. Good point. Scott Bauer. Great to see you, Scott. Scott Bauer of Prosper you Trading too, Academy and our own Rick Ducat there on the charts looking at Broadcom, PayPal, General Motors and more. Thank you for the big three today.